All right, hello. Um, I'm gonna show you OBS now. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go into settings and make all your settings the same as mine. Um, I have some of these settings set up so that, you know, so that it works out for me. Um, studio mode is in what I'm in right now, which is having this scene that is ready to transition to on the left and the current scene on the right which is why you have this infinite thing going on right here and all you have to do is click that to go to studio mode so do that because it's really nice to have that going on um go ahead and pause the video on each of these i'll show you how to get a stream key right now you're going to want to um, first select Twitch as a service. There's different ones, but um, Twitch is the one you're going to want. Use this server right here. It's the closest one to us that works, rather. It's also the fastest one, so use that one. To get the stream key, you are going to go to the internet. I'm going to go to twitch.tv Except you're going to spell it correctly If I go to channel Under settings, oops, something went wrong Well that's cool Let's try again Channel here we go. Go to stream key, show key. And it'll show you your key after clicking like yes and stuff like that. And then you're going to just copy and paste that into here. There's the output. It's all going to be grayed out for me because I'm recording right now. Make sure this is in advanced and that all the audio tracks are checked and that the recording format is mp4 everything after that totally up to you um, you can name your tracks I name mine track 1 as being all the different audios track 2 is the commentary which is the microphones and track 3 is the video which is what's showing on screen so it could be the desktop or the Elgato or whatnot I haven't decided what for these, but if we ever get more mics, it's probably what it's going to be. Um, right now, there's no delay between any of these. But enable push to mute in all of them is probably a good idea, as long as you have a mute button in your hotkeys. Blah, blah, blah. These are hotkeys. Make them if you want. Don't if you don't. You can actually... Um, for start, stop and start recording, I used to have them be the same hotkey as streaming, but uh, now I just have it set so that when I start streaming, it's automatically recording, so I just have this for recording, and I'll just press streaming, so that's easier for me. Um, you could switch to scene with these hotkeys. And what this will do is it'll queue up the scene, it won't actually transition to it. So you're going to have to transition to that scene after that. There's also microphone muting, and Elgato muting, desktop muting, stuff like that. If I go over here, um, this is the settings I have for that. Okay. And then what you're going to have to probably do is this, this, and then hit apply. So, that's done with, and I will show you this. So OBS works in a ladder of systems. So it's got scenes, sources for those scenes, mixers for the audios of sources that have audio, and then it's got your controls over here. Um, I set my scene transitions to fade because it looks better than just cut. And this is duration I just chose. Um, 
yeah, that's about it. Start streaming here. Usually that happens to uh, also do recording if it's in your settings that you do. I'm going to show you how to create a scene. So if you want to make a scene, you go ahead, press the plus button, and you add a new scene. So I'm going to name this the, uh, the scene. Alright, so now it's going to be a scene. Since it's selected, it's up in the queue. So if I select any other scene, it becomes the queued scene. And this is the current scene. So if I transition right now, it's just a black screen. I'm going to transition back, and that's there. Now what you didn't see was um, when you switch scenes, the current scene moves over to the queued section. But you'll see that when you're doing it. So that's how you create a scene. All right, well, we have a scene, but it's black. So what are we going to do? We're going to add some sources. So the first thing I add is usually the background of whatever I'm going to do. So if you do add, you could do image. And uh, I have some existing images here from other scenes. But let's go ahead and do the image for the scene. Um, so I'm going to browse. I'm going to go into where I have that image. And it's right here. So I'm going to hit OK. And that image is going to come in just like this. It's going to be in its own little resolution. Now what you can do is either stretch it out. Or you can um, apply filters, which can distort the image. So I go to filters. And there's a bunch of different effects I can do. So I'm going to make that a little shorter. So if I add an effect. Um, so there's a chroma key effect to where you can select a color and make that color invisible on the image. So if I had like um, some sort of orange box here, I could select orange and everything in that orange box will become um, transparent to the layers below it. And this works in a layer system just like Photoshop. So the top one's going to show up on top and everything below it's going to show down in a layer. Um, you can crop the image. So if I um, wanted to crop it, I can name it the crop. And basically, you add pixels to the left, top, right, and bottom in order to crop the image. So I'm going to put it back at zero. And um, there's other filters you can do too. So if I come over here, you can sharpen the image, you can scale the image, you can have a render delay. Oh, that's interesting. Hang on. Oh, so you could delay a certain source. Oh, we could probably use this for lettuce runs. So if I delayed this 1,000 milliseconds, oh, okay, it only goes 200. No, it goes further. Okay, so basically, you could delay certain sources. Okay, so now I have my image, but I want that image to just cover this much. So what do I do? I literally just move it over. Doesn't hurt anything. We're trying to make it look kind of like the uh, lettuce play, so I'm just going to move it over. And you can use the arrow keys to... Uh, Move it over just like you do in Word, and uh, that almost lines up. It's good enough. All right. So the next thing I'm going to add is some text. Um, unless you have a logo that you already want, then you could just uh, put that in as an image. But I'm going to put the Let Us Run logo up here. Um, I have an existing logo right here, but I'll just show you what it looks like to add text. You could select a font. I'm going to select the Papyrus font somewhere in here. There it is. 
Um, there's going to be a strikeout and an uncle line. It's going to be bold, italic. That's about it for right now. I'm going to do lettuce run. You can make the text vertical if you choose, but that just rotates it, so I don't see the point. Um, you can select the color of the text. So I'm going to select uh, this color, which is it's red. Um, you can have a background. I'm sorry, the color you can select has an opacity, so you could select an opacity for the color. Obviously, you probably want this to be, well, 100% visible, but let's say you have, like, this texture behind it, so you could have that texture behind the text, and it would show that image, and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things you could do with this. Um, let's see. You can make it a gradient. So I can select a gradient color as black. And you can make the direction of the gradient any way you want. I'm going to make it here. It'll go zero degrees, so the gradient's vertical. And 90 degrees means it's horizontal. Um, you can have a background color. So if you have a background, it's going to be a box around the text. But we don't want a box around the text. We just want something that follows the text. So you could select outline which is basically like a stroke um, that you add to text and you can make that go further and further up and then select the color like green and there you go um, so I'm going to hit OK and I didn't bother changing the text size because I could just do this So there you go on that. And now we need some text under here to show the, uh, well, the time to beat. So I'm going to name this the text 2. Being really creative here. And I'm just going to make this an aerial. It's not going to be that bad. Um, so I say time to beat. Oh well. Okay. Put that right there. Make it a bit bigger. Move it to the left with the arrow keys. There we go. And then I'm going to add text again. And that's going to be the time. So I'm going to do zero, 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 zero. Scale that up, scale it down a bit, and move it right here. Now I uh, obviously have my time to be looking a little bit different. It's uh, got a small white stroke, it's a green color, and it's got an underline. So you could just do that with yours as well. This seems to be a little smaller. And all right, so now you have that much. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is add your timer. Um, the way to do that is with window capture. And what window capture does is you can select any window that, of an active program that you have open. So right now I have live split open down here. And I can select, oh, well, it's not here. Uh, 
Give me one sec. So I just exited out of that, right? And but the window is still right there. So I'm going to open up Live Split, move it around a bit, because why not? And then I'm going to right click, select Properties, and I can go right back into here. And there we go. It just happened to work now. So there we go. I selected Live Split. And now I'm going to put that here. I'm going to open it up a bit. And there we go. So now this is capturing whatever this window does. Now um, you need to be sure when you have window capture on, if you don't want to capture your mouse, uncheck that. All right. I usually do that to be safe, even though it's not happening to capture it. I usually do that to be safe anyway. So now you have your logo, your time, this timer, and you need your game, right? So if you're doing this on um, Visual Boy Advance on an emulator or something like that, you're going to do window capture again. So I'm going to open up Visual Boy Advance. That's going to be the emulator I have. It's going to be right here. And then I'm going to say add another window capture. Of course, this is in the way. This always gets in the way, by the way. The window capture 2. Wait, no. The window. Two. So at least be consistent. And Visual Boy Advance is right there. And luckily for this pro particular program, it seems to only capture what's in the program itself. So that's nice. So now we have that there. I'm going to do that real quick. Um, you can enlarge it. And that should work out pretty nicely. So if I went into Visual Boy Advance, as long as I kept it, oh, see, look, there's the cursor. As long as I kept it this size, it's going to be that size here. But if I make this bigger, it also makes that bigger. So make sure you have it the exact size you want before you scale it in OBS. And as I said before, I don't want to capture my cursor. So I'm going to go into the window too and uncheck that so that when I have this up, it doesn't capture my cursor over here. See? So I'm going to open uh, Nightmare in Dreamland. And there it is. And now I have a desktop audio. I'm going to lower that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how that works. Um, the last thing you want to do is add your logo, right? So you'd make your logo in uh, Photoshop. And then you make sure that is a PNG file. Uh, the way I have it right here, it's just a JPEG. But if you make sure it's a PNG, then you can actually make it like just this. But I have no idea where my PNG file is for Mr. Rob, so I have to go look for that. Um, anyway, you make it a PNG file in Photoshop. And then you add an image. So I'm going to go to image again. The image 2. And there it is. Look at that. Let's see. So it is a PNG. Let's see what we could do about that. So I have Mr. Rob. Right. Oh, I accidentally selected that. I have Mr. Rob. I'm going to bring it down here. And I'm going to come into the image too and go over to filters. And let's try out that chroma key thing. So add chroma key. 
chroma. So I'm going to add a custom key. I'm going to select black. And uh, can we enlarge that? There we go. So you just shift these around until it works. Oh, interesting. So that gray is going to be... Hmm. All right, well... I'm sure this works somehow. So just fiddle around with the settings until it works for you. But it should come out as not being around there. So it basically it's just like a green screen, but you could choose any color you want. And that's about it. So uh, that's how I set that up. And I'm going to transition to it. This is how it's going to look um, when they're watching you. And uh, something about, something to note about at least Visual Boy Advanced is if you click out of the window it pauses the screen so just be aware of that uh, that might happen on other emulators as well I don't see why it wouldn't happen on other emulators so you just need to be aware of that um, and this the timer window has to be active for you to do the hotkeys on that so make sure you're aware of that and in order to set hotkeys, you just right click up here, go over to settings, and they have the hotkeys right here that you could set up on your own. Okay. Um, if you want to edit the layout, you can make it any color at all. So I go to layout settings, and you can copy these. I'm sure you could tell these colors a lot better apart than I can. Here's where you make your splits layout and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to hit OK here. If you come over here and edit splits, type in the game name up here, but then choose it from a drop down menu. So I'm going to look for Mega Man ZX and see if they have one. Mega. Hmm. Alright, let's go just type in Mega Man. Well, let's pretend like you're doing Mega Man 2. Right? Here's Mega Man 2. So now just go let it turn for like three seconds. And here we go. And just do that. So there's no category for Mega Man 2 so far. Cool. Usually there's a category. Let me show you an example of Kirby. So Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. There's a run 100%, there's an any percent. I should really have done the any percent category really, but the 100% is just way more fun. Um, you can start the timer, show your attempts, but I have my attempts hidden. Doesn't matter. Um, and then you create your splits by doing that. Um, you right click over here to set icon. Whoops, sorry. You right click over here to download box art, and then it sets that. So that's how you do that. I hit cancel so that this still pops up because I have to still make this um, overlay video. But that's about it. Um, yeah, okay. Bye bye.